Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to HR Katha presents Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me. At HR Katha, we are committed to honor the nuances of a happy workplace. Every month, we speak to HR and corporate leaders who, apart from their regular responsibilities, also ensure that their work, place of work practices a happy culture. Today, we'll continue this discussion around employee happiness with Mahipal Nair, CHRO, South Asia, Africa, and Middle East, Nielsen IQ. Mahipal is a seasoned HR professional with a career spanning over two decades. He has worked in the media space with brands such as Malayala Manorama. Currently, he is heading people practices at Nielsen. Mahipal, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. What comes to your mind, you know, when I say uh, happiness at the workplace? So one way of looking at it, uh, and this is something to do with uh, the way our company operates. Uh, it's, a, it's a professional services company. So the asset that we have in a very cliche terms is people. So while I'll say that this is a cliche terms, but for us, it's the reason that Rick. So it's like uh, the way I see it. The talent that works for Nielsen IQ comes in the morning and leaves in the evening. So our asset actually is not with us the time duration that they are at home. And our biggest challenge is to get them back every day morning. And when they come back every day morning, they should come refreshed, full of energy and uh, wanting to work. At the same time, the evening when they leave, they should leave in a, in a state of mind which I would want to qualify as happy. Because if they are happy, they will go back home, uh, lead a life, uh, whatever uh, evening times is left with the family, with energy, with positivity and with the right intent. And that will push them back next day morning with even more desire and energy. So that's the kind of cycle I would see when, it, when I look at my role and when I look at our company and what kind of culture that we want to set, what culture we already have and what we want to keep growing. So, yeah, that's one way to look at it. Meaning I will, for personally, for me, it's the same thing. If I come at work every day, uh, I have to have the sense of purpose. I should feel like being here and spending whatever number of hours that I need to put in at work. And uh, when I, and there are times when you might feel a bit uh, down or uh, not so happy with the things around you, but Every time that I think, oh, there are so many, I mean, uh, roughly we have about 6,000, 6,500 people in our region. Yeah. And I then feel a sense of responsibility towards them. And I, it like within a minute, I'm back. So, so that's what, is, that's what, what is, is happiness is for me, because that's what makes me to be in HR. That's what years ago I chose to be in HR for that same reason. Okay, so what do you think, you know, what keeps the employees happy? Is it, is it, you know, uh, money can't be the only trigger. I know, you know, it's, it can't be the pay packages. So what do you think keeps the employees happy? Is there, is there a formula to it? Is there a strategy to it? Or, you know, can, can that be planned? Yes, to uh, to a large extent, for most people, yes. Maybe, of course, uh, at different stages, it can differ. It, at some certain stage, it can certainly be a money as well. Yeah. But what I have seen it, and again, look, speaking from the lens that I have uh, had for my life, um, the number one uh, 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 would always be the sense of purpose, the reason that uh, you have chosen to work like and i'm speaking for people who choose to work in corporate sector yeah if i was in business then probably I'm, well, my reasons would have been slightly different but uh i think for most people as long as they know why they choose to work if i'm an hr professional as long as i know why i why i chose to be in hr and why i continue to be in hr similarly marketing journalism sales and so on I think that's the first and foremost thing because that's what keeps you going. We we all speak about passion. We all speak about interest. We all speak. We know what it means to us. Similarly, if we can get that level of clarity, 
uh, about what we choose to do. I think that's that's what will make us or employees happy. So, so what, yeah, that's as the an, perspective. As an organization, what do you do? You know, so that is that is from an you know the individual's perspective. You know, so if individual yeah. or any employee you know finds purpose in what he or she is doing, you know, he or she will be happy. But as an organization, you have a task in hand, you know, to keep everyone happy, to keep the employees happy, you know. Yeah. So what is yes. that you do to keep them happy? So, yes. So that uh, from that perspective, what we try to do is keep the pulse of people in check. And that we do through uh, specifically we run these in typical engagement surveys. Yeah. Uh, we do it through Gallup, uh, which is which is a uh, leading name or leading brand in this space uh, that helps us do a good sense check uh, every year in fact we do it uh, uh, this year we haven't done it but typically we do a pulse check and then we do a full check so that way twice in a year we have a sense of uh, what our people are thinking and saying uh, so that's one second is that uh, uh, when people come to work it's equally important to make it clearer to them so give them the clarity and in order to give them the clarity, uh, the first one is the job. So they have hired, they have been hired for a job yeah. and they are supposed to do a role. So at, every year we, we put a lot of focus on setting up for the objectives so that people are clear of what is expected of them. That's second. Third is that uh, people come at work to grow their career. So what can we do in terms of uh, their learning and development? Then the fourth would be in terms of uh, what kind of options we can give. And, and there we have an advantage because uh, it's a multinational company. We have offices across the world. We have different types of work, though on the face of it, we might be classified as a market research company. But there are varied facets to it. And to that extent, we, we have a number of opportunities to rotate. Um, so within the same company, uh, you could be doing different jobs. We work very closely with some of the best brands in the world. So, so yeah. in fact, that's how we attract talent uh, when we go to the campus. That you can choose to work, you can choose to work with one brand. Uh, let's say if you have top hundred brands, or you work with us because we would be working with this, those top hundred brands. Uh, All so, yeah. so, so we rotate. We even give opportunities to, uh, to our associates to work with the clients on short-term assignments, uh, on secondments. Uh, and then it comes to rewards and recognition. Then there is, uh, and these are nothing different from most companies, but there is a rhythm to it. So people feel recognized, they feel rewarded. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, then there are those fun and games that keep happening. Uh, 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 again, I would not claim anything out of the world or our, uh, way different from what most companies do, but do it diligently and with respect and care. That okay. certainly, be, ours is a company that gives a lot of flexibility to our people uh, and uh, is known for its culture of being nice to each other. So, yeah, uh, respect and care is definitely those two things that, that make people stick on to us. Or, uh, or uh, in fact, if I were to look at the boomerangs that we are able to attack, people who return to us is huge. Yeah. Like, Typically, every year, then we, if you hire, let's say, between 700 to 1,000 people in India, uh, and this is not an absolute plus number, it also includes attritions and new additions to job, uh, uh, new uh, additional jobs. All put together, we would be attracting at least 15 to 20 percent people who would be returning to Nielsen. So, these, in a nutshell, are things that we do that gives a sense of purpose to our people, keeps them engaged, and keeps them motivated. Okay, you know, yours is a company uh, where uh, you know, if I compare with any other sectors, it it is uh, you know a large, uh, or or most of your employees are intellectuals or educated. You know, we can classify them accordingly. Knowledge workers, you can call it. Knowledge yes. workers, yes. Yeah. So, is there a you know, is is the their definition of happiness is any different from people who could be working in other sectors like a manufacturing or yes uh, yes yes yeah so, because so their yeah. understanding so, of life is uh, a little different i think so correct so uh, 
So I would say in one word, intellectual stimulation uh, will be one such thing that that definitely makes a big difference because yeah. uh, there are people. These are sort of people who enjoy doing a uh, uh, lot of uh, thought leadership work. Uh, so yes, that that that's a big big uh, difference. Uh, again, yeah. uh, uh, this is primarily to do because a lot of people come to us who have, who come because they like this intellectual stimulation. So yes. So having that flavor in the job is definitely needed. Yeah, and that's that's probably a bit different from other companies. Yes. T tell me, when you started your career, you know, so mm -hmm. was the uh, you know nuances of happiness changed since then? What you see among youngsters now, you know, have the parameters changed? Have the you know uh, the, the definition of happiness changed? So, so yeah, when you think about happiness, obviously one thing is that it would always be different things to different people. So yes. if I were to relate from my own career, yeah, like I said, initially money used to, <laughs> money and the brand of the company used to matter a lot, at least to yeah. me and my, those who were with me, uh, a yeah. certain amount of money. And, but definitely I would say that number one was the kind of company you associate with. Uh, that, was, that was the trigger point when you started, you know. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So it was always very important which kind because you should feel proud about I work in this company and I, yes. I and I was fortunate enough that I got into one such and worked for work there for a long time. So, so the feature was, of the company was more important, you know, that yes, gave you yes. a kind of satisfaction, uh, you know. Which led yes. To yes. Us. Yeah. And like I said, in my case, I uh, uh, I do consider uh, fortunate that. Uh, Early on, I could sense that HR is the career that I should pursue. So to that extent, I didn't have any doubt about where should I be going. Yeah. So the company, if I chose uh, uh, carefully and I selected or rather the company selected me or both ways, uh, then it, it did make a big difference to me in the initial stage of my career. Yeah. Uh, so, but one more thing I can say is, uh, uh, at least in my case, uh, those who grew up with me, because we used to, our parents were teachers, my, my, my parents were teachers, and uh, yeah. and so were, because we grew up in a campus, and so were many of my uh, classmates or uh, my peer group. Uh, so there was definitely a bent towards anything to do with intellectuals. <coughs> So, so, and that probably defined the kind of companies I chose to work right from my start of the company. So I do see that uh, at least those I uh, uh, grew up with, but yeah, that's as particular type of people and uh, more to do with their upbringing. So what, what has changed now when you see, you know, somebody who is starting their uh, career right now, how has the parameters changed? Do so you, I would say now, now these people put in. Yeah. So nowadays I see a lot of emphasis on flexibility. Um, okay. uh, and, and that's again, I can relate to like I've been in uh, Nielsen or now it's called Nielsen IQ for the last yeah. 15 years. One of the things that I have continued, one, of course, my career grew. I, mean, I could do many things. I could uh, move around different places. So uh, but when I see the current generation, they look for that flexibility growth much more than what it used to be before uh, and of course their loyalty is also to the company which invests in their growth so okay. as long as they, they feel that that's that company is investing in them and they are able to contribute people continue to uh, but flexibility and uh, and comfort and i would add those words that i think people look for egalitarian kind of culture these days uh, definitely in Gen Z, uh, yeah. uh, they do not care for hierarchy or or seniority, and uh, and they come with an edge because this is the generation that has born after the internet, uh, at least in India. So that way, uh, they are much at, at, for many things. They are actually ahead of uh, those who are. Yeah, from, uh, earlier know, yeah, yeah. So there is a sense of equality, there is a sense of inclusion, which is way higher than the previous one. So so I think these days people look at the, the, these kind of elements as well when they define the happiness for themselves. 
So whether I'm getting the flexibility, whether I'm getting included, whether I get to participate in decision making, whether I'm involved or not, and do I get the uh, flexibility that I want? So in, in, in simple words, people want to be themselves when they come to work far more than before. But but that does not create a problem, you know, it becomes very difficult to sometimes manage because what happens is, you know, people who have had the experience and moved up the ladder and, uh, you know, reached a certain place right now, they demand certain kind of respect or they expect certain kind of respect, you know, which when they don't get it from, you know, somebody junior, you know, they, there is a rift that that is created correct how, and that those how does, you know one deal with that kind of situation because any kind of re rift would create an unhappy environment or an unhappy situation yeah. you know yeah. it might be temporary but but it certainly you know those keeps on contributing towards a very you know unhappy environment you know yeah so the, the way I look at it is uh, that's the responsibility towards the that senior leaders or senior employees of an, any organization will have. They will they it's like they have to behave like a bigger. So you can behave two ways. You can behave like a bully big brother, or you yeah. can behave like a generous big brother. Who, uh, so so the choice is ours. So I think yeah. uh, the more you behave like a generous big brother rather than or generous elder. Uh, either word is fine rather than it's the problem happens when you uh, of course uh, uh, the younger ones will will uh, do certain things they may be prone to mistakes and they will learn but uh, the responsibility will all i in my perspective will be with the senior or elders they will have to behave like bigger bro big brother with a large heart and uh, create that environment where because respect is ultimately is to be earned it cannot be given just because of age or experience yeah. so so that way i think that responsibility will always be and this is where again if i were to go back to the nielsen iq kind of a culture this is where the the sense of equality is what uh, uh, makes a different kind of a workplace or more inclusive kind of a workplace yeah so but but generally do you do you uh, kind of you know i would not say train but uh, do you kind of uh, you know basically acquaint the senior workforce to behave in a certain way or do you advise them or do you yeah so what we do or like uh, is that there are certain values that we expect in the company which are professed values uh, there are certain norms, there are certain kind of behaviors. So we certainly want our leaders to demonstrate them. And, and those values and behaviors are expected to be the guardrails. And that's not just for senior, because senior leaders will always define what the kind of culture they want to create. Mid-level mid, mid managers is the... the yeah, but at the same time, that would be the expected norm uh, from all, not just the yeah. senior. Of course, we would expect the senior leaders to demonstrate it, uh, because that's how the culture will be formed, but the, the others will are also expected to. So we do expect people to follow within the norms. And uh, that we do in, invest a lot of time in uh, talking about those values, talking about uh, the expected behavior, and also behaving and demonstrating that in, in the way we operate. So so yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's certainly something that we do, and fairly regularly. So, you know, who do you think, you know, if, if I uh, segregate uh, the workforce in three segments, you know, one, there is the top senior leadership and one, there are entry level people or, you know, people with zero to five years of experience. Then there is an, you know, this mid-level managers, you know, yes. who are neither the freshers or not have reached the senior leadership. Who do you think yeah. is, uh, you know, more difficult to manage? Or, or more difficult to keep them happy, you know. Who, who if I so that will be, yeah, around, yeah, that that, the script so that will always be, yeah, that will be the early ones, uh, the ones who join the company. So definitely the Gen Z and then I can say millennials. Uh, yeah. The reason being that uh, these are the ones who want to experiment, explore far more than others. Yeah, uh, and if you go by the 
typical trends in companies uh, if empl uh, if so employees have crossed the threshold of let's say four years then they are likely to stay these days so yeah four three because not many people go beyond three to four years but if they stay then they stay uh, now uh, if you go by the trends the millennials and gen z they're unlikely to stay that long and because they are in that experiment uh, uh, yeah. in the zone of experimentation during those years they they are the more demanding ones they have certain experience they come with a vision so i and an early attrition is something that if many companies grapple we certainly do yeah and that's because they have a certain image of the company they have a certain image of the kind of work is expected and then when they start they realize okay um, when you uh, are at the early uh, entry level the kind of work expectation could be very different from what they have visualized because you come from b school you have yeah. so if they cannot comprehend oh, they can't settle down they move yeah. on so to that extent definitely that's the work group which is most demanding without doubt okay so is there a different way to keep them happy again you will say you know the yeah growth. yeah yeah yes so so the way to do is so again keep our ears to the ground so i spoke about those engagements away but more importantly then how uh, how often or how differently we connect with them what kind of so uh, so we do uh, allow for various groups uh, and smaller groups large groups kind of conversations to take place in fact even recently there have been some certain conversation just going on just to get a sense of what people are thinking and feeling and and because our uh, at this stage our company is in a transformation phase we just uh, uh, spun off into two different companies from we used to be nielsen and now we nielsen and nielsen iq yeah so and 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 such a massive change uh, will lead to a uh, certain level of uncertainty certain level of confusion or uh, uh, or questions so yeah. so we have recently done a massive exercise of uh, listening to them and and different work groups so that is done and then of course we will close the uh, loop with them when we get back to them as senior leaders but all these exercises are done primarily to keep a sense check of what's happening with them and then we can't we will not be able to uh, satisfy everyone but large number of them and uh, and people feel good about it that at least someone is listening and when they uh, when they feel uh, that they have been included or they are being made to participate in a certain conversation of course it makes a big difference to everyone yeah uh, it does give them a sense that they are at a place where they are being heard it makes a big difference so you mean to say you know for this new generation you know three things are important one would be listening to them making them feel belong to the place yes okay and, and their own personal career growth and and letting them be so within the norms i would say yeah because as long as i can bring the best of myself to work which is true for everyone but I also people do not like uh, there was a time people used to talk a lot about dress code punctuality yeah. uh, uh, now so fortunately for our company we were always known for flexibility work from home now look at last what has happened in 18 months what dress code <laughs> what because you, you people were switching on switching off because everyone is working so which means people yeah. were stretching but then they were still able to bring their best to the work yeah so if you now let's say even if you were to go back to an environment where a good number of people return to work uh, even then this will matter this has to be taken into consideration that that's where people are at their productive best yeah so some of those things you said and then people let people be and then as long as there is no like you know there is an expectation to wear a tie and jacket in certain occasion then be it but not all the times <laughs> uh, sometimes you wonder that why yeah, yeah so so I, uh, so yeah those those things do make a difference and i think uh, it also makes a difference to how youngsters uh, look at the place at place of work so you you want to say that you know uh, you know we have to do away with the unnecessary practices or unnecessary yes. rigid rigid yeah for practices. example for example that uh, uh, even though again i will talk about our own company while we had a very open culture of uh, flexi time and choosing to work from home 
but that's not something that was extended to those who were fresh from campus or in the first two years. People used to be generally, and 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 till of course uh, last year we realized that okay, that's became a norm. Uh, and for certain work processes, we used to think that okay, that needs to be done. Uh, uh, with that advantage uh, of last year and this year, obviously some of those norms we will have to change and we will, even if suppose we were to get everyone back to office, which is unlikely to happen in our case, because we will now yeah. be like most companies, hybrid environment. So then some of those norms, if uh, especially like, for example, a lot of people feel uncomfortable about a certain kind of dress code. We don't have one, but then yeah. uh, so and, and people have been comfortable working <laughs> It did not make any difference to productivity. So some of those should be challenged and should be should be uh, should be done away with, uh, so that uh, the intended purpose of why you should have a person working at office is met. So you you again people. with with, with, yeah. with caveat of uh, well, within remaining in certain basic norms right. of course. Yeah, I'm I'm saying you you manage people across geographies. You know, you yes. manage India, South Asia. You also manage. Africa, you also manage yes. Middle East, you know. How do you see that nuances of advertising being, oh, sorry, nuances of happiness being different uh, across? So, uh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so, when I talk about Middle East, definitely there is, there is because uh, uh, people in Middle East uh, are very, very particular about uh, certain timings, about things. So some are led by religious practices, some are by personal choices. So uh, uh, in a, and right now I'm talking about Middle Eastern culture. Uh, uh, for them, work is important, but then being at home with family with no disturbance is equally important. So any job that does not give them the time and space of switching off and switching on, then they don't like it. Uh, so that's something that I learned. That is across age across groups. age groups, yeah, and weekends has to be something. But and and uh, they need their breaks. Uh, like uh, in the days that I used to be in that region, um, I yeah. found that smoking patterns, for example, was way higher as compared to India. So for yeah. people, it was important to have a smoke room, uh, even if the office was considered to be a smoke-free zone. So it could be small little things, and then having the time to spend over the weekend, um, holidays, switching off completely, which I had not seen back then in India as much. Uh, Indians are typically always switched on to do work or you can call any time, that kind of a culture, versus suddenly getting into a culture where you, it's not all right to call after a certain time. So, so that's that. Uh, when it, it comes it to now, yeah, yeah. Call, and then res uh, respect is very important again. Warmth and respect. These are two things I, uh, I I would say for Middle East because uh, warmth, because uh, these are people who are driven by heart, they keep their passion on their sleeve and uh, respect. This one place where three times, four times you meet, you still have to greet them. Uh, okay. If I were to compare with India, then you can just start without say, even saying hello. Uh, people can, without checking each other's well-being, yeah. people generally get to the task, doesn't happen in there. In the Middle East, four times in the day you meet, you have to be so these and and people can get put off if you don't do that. So that's another way of living. Um, if I were to look at Africa, the warmth part will remain common, uh, 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 but there is certain level of energy and eagerness to do things, and that energy and eagerness is also there in other parts. So, for, for example, one common one you will see in sports. Yeah. <laughs> so so people. And across Africa as a continent, football is one thing that makes everyone happy. <laughs> so just the way cricket makes people happy yeah, in yeah. so football. Uh, uh, so, uh, but cultural norms is something I would consider as uh, as common across Africa, India, Middle East. Culture is important. Family bondings are important. That's something I would consider as uh, similar. Yeah. Otherwise, in terms of aspirations of people, career, uh, or otherwise, it's by and large same because we all belong to that typical developing country kind of mindset where economies are growing. There is increasing prosperity. There is a lot uh, of consumer spending. So that way there is a commonality as well. Maybe if there is one other big difference is the uh, competitiveness. There's less competitiveness 
in Africa and Middle East as uh, India definitely will rank much higher on uh, competitiveness amongst each other. Each other yeah. So and then how is the one reason? I'm just linking it because this is one reason of unhappiness for sure. Because yes. the more you compete and compare, the in the you that creates an unhappy uh, yeah. kind of. And in place, Africa, yes. how is it different? You know, uh, you know, you were primarily talking about. Middle East in Africa also. You I, no, Africa. I said that uh, 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 warmth, uh, personal warmth, energy is uh, uh, is something that differentiate Africans. Uh, Africans is, as a race wants to do well because uh, that's a continent that uh, has a lot of uh, natural resources. Yeah. So they are also proud about that. And when I when I was talking about football, I was talking about the entire African continent. That's so that's African, something. Yeah. And, and and sports is very important. So that's uh, another aspect. Uh, but in terms of career aspiration, and other things similar. Uh, Africa, Middle East, uh, India, all are uh, common. And, and I, like I said, uh, uh, because they also have a personal space uh, and they have activities beyond work. So when I look at Africa, because it also has many underdeveloped areas. So people work towards that. They work towards uh, community well-being, um, uh, which is way higher uh, as compared to India and Africa. And of course, there are these uh, 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 UN type of agencies are also working there or donor agencies also working there. So that also gives a sense of uh, purpose to people when they work in that those kind of sector, either full time or part time uh, or voluntary basis. So that's something I have seen in Africa, which is different and which makes them happy. Uh, definitely more contented uh, when they work okay. for their community. In India, in, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, generally uh, we have all experienced that there's a lot of informality at the workplace, you know. Yeah. Does that contribute to happiness or does, sometimes that creates unhappiness, you know, that... I would say it does contribute to happiness because informality mean, again means I would connect it to uh, bringing your... You know, if it is too rigid, then you... Compare it with, uh, you know, the government organization. You say, you know, yes. you are yes. having like a government organization. You know, yes. In, in basically but, private or corporate organization, everybody becomes like, uh, you know, friends. You make friends yeah. out here, yes. which does not yeah. happen in uh, happen in other markets probably. Yeah. So that informality does help uh, because that brings people closer. Uh, so if I again uh, was talking about. Gallup as uh, as the method or as rather the company that we use for our engagement service so it has one of one of the question it asks in, is uh, do you have a best friend at work okay now uh, if you increase a culture or work environment where you can have friends at work that's the ideal because companies all over the world try to make a home like environment if you feel yeah. that your company is your extended family that that's your best way to get to a space where you feel comfortable why do most most of us feel like going home the word like feel like going home happens yeah. because home is a place where you feel comfortable you feel safe so uh, and there are many companies who want to say that no this is an extended family we want to create that so but not many try for uh, or strive towards it but what is a family like environment at work that's the ideal environment uh, to be, to, to use the word, uh, create a sense of bonding and create a sense of happiness. Because then you will look forward to coming at work. Because if you have your best friends at work, or you feel like this is my family, or this is my extended family, then, then again, sense of belongingness goes up, as we spoke earlier. So, and and uh, uh, and when you, you have that environment, the formality will automatically will go away and more personal appeal will come in but when, don't you think you know when there is too much of uh, you know friendship or you know camaraderie among team members you know there is a tendency to ignore mistakes and that sometimes could become dangerous so yeah so we will have to also be careful that accountability is different versus so accountability can still be uh, it has to be high on any company's radar because uh, if you bring sense of responsibility and hold people accountable hold each other accountable that has to be there and i think personally i believe 
uh, that you can be friends and still hold each other accountable. We do that all the time with our close friends anyway. It's not yeah. that we look at the other way. Uh, of course, some people can do it, but then that's that the most ideal friendship. In friendship also, you should hold each other accountable and be genuine and sincere about it. And same can be done at workplace as well. Okay. I certainly uh, think that you can be objective, you can hold each other accountable and still be friends. Uh, I know that, that there is a parallel thought process that might say that the closer you go, uh, you have to keep a distance. But I think that's more, it's become, it probably used to work maybe 20 years ago. It certainly, I don't think it's it can work uh, in the current times. But this friendship works only for people like, you know, who are at the same level or it, this friendship Across between, levels. I would say across levels. Between uh, a senior had, and a junior or between the boss and the junior can also be friends. Do you encourage that kind of environment? Yes, yes. I, I personally, I enjoy being with my team members who are in reporting relationship. I uh, meaning, uh, so there is work and there is fun and uh, I, uh, team members should be able to uh, make fun about me as much as I am able to do about them. It shouldn't be one way street because otherwise it's like I'm taking the advantage of being a senior or the leader. Yeah. But I I do have friends across levels and, uh, and, and enjoy that part of uh, being at work. Look forward. Again, that's what we've been missing for the last year and a half that you don't have because everything becomes a call, which is a different yeah. thing. So, so yeah, that, that those are things that uh, that I do value personally. I have had friends across different uh, geographies. Uh, countries uh, and cultures, primarily because of work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had. Yeah. No, in India, we we have all have colleagues have become our best of friends. Actually, yes. probably we, you know, like you meet people in colleges, they become friends. You meet people at work, and they become best of your friends. You know, you become yes family uh, at yes. some point of yes. time. You know. Personally, what are what are the yardsticks of your happiness? You know, what, what so I, 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 I like uh, any workplace uh, which is fair, inclusive, and transparent. Okay. So fairness is important to me. Transparency is important to me. People should know why th things are happening. Uh, it should not be like, oh no, this is a secret or. Of course, in organization, not everything can be made transparent. That's true. Yeah. But then most of it should be. Um, uh, like we were talking about how typically in government, people will not give why certain things cannot be done. They will just throw yeah. some rule. Uh, in private sector, you don't have that kind of uh, flexibility. You, you, and it will look very odd because ultimately it's, it's an organization for profit. So, so these three things are important. And then sense of belongingness. Uh, there is sense of meritocracy. Uh, so all these, uh, again, if I were to talk about uh, what has kept me uh, going for the last 15 years in Nielsen or Nielsen IQ, these are the, because I found the right culture, I found a lot of friends, <coughs> I saw people growing around me, people who were hired 10 years ago are senior levels now, so you see uh, the meritocracy in action. So, so I also find that okay, the what I chose to chose as a profession many years ago, as in being in HR and seeing those things in action, that makes me really, really happy. And then be on the right track. So, and that's what keeps me going as well. So, how how, how important is personal achievement for your happiness, or or for say anybody else's? So that depends, meaning uh, for different people, achievement can be different things. So as long as you get going in the right direction, you're getting the goals. So so in a company like ours, if you're growing, people are growing, company is growing, then there is all, all, uh, all uh, you make an impact to the community through that because your clients grow. So, so when everyone grows, you grow and that gives you a sense of achievement. At certain times, it can also be with the kind of role you do, whether those are in roles and responsibilities are increased. But I would say these keep changing. But the biggest uh, difference uh, that or that that uh, you make is through the impact of your work. And if you see the impact of your work, then that I think that's something definitely uh, the highest variable for me. That am I making a difference? Am I making an impact? 
and uh, am I adding adding value? Yeah. Then rest is okay. You know? Otherwise, during a career, you can have wider responsibility. You can have a deeper responsibility. Uh, and growth definition itself might change. It's certainly not what it used to be 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> so, per, no, no, so personal, uh, you know, happiness and your professional happiness are the two different, or you can no, it's uh, same for you me. know, same, 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 same. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's same because ultimately I'm same person. Uh, 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 yeah, I do believe that that because. Ultimately, the person is seen. So both are the two important facets of so your different uh, sides of uh, you. Yeah, your personality. Uh, yeah. yeah, and as long as and that's why it's important to kind of find the workplace where you can be yourself. Again, I will go back to the same word that I used earlier, yeah. because then you can express yourself. You don't have to hold yourself. Why? Again, of course. 100% may not happen. There are things that you can do at home. You may not be able to do at work, uh, which is true. That, that there will still be certain boundaries. And that's why it's a... But that might be true even if you go to an airport. <laughs> you might not do yeah. the same thing. So so airport is also a community where you have to follow the norms. You go to a certain other place. You, you go to a mall. You have said. So there will be certain norms that will be gone. But, but if as long as you can express yourself, you can bring the best of yourself, I think uh, uh, that... That's a big plus. And to that extent, I don't differentiate between that personal professional as much as like I've heard like many people keep, oh, this is my professional side is kept uh, independent of my business. So, but that's another perspective. I have obviously people have their own ways of looking at, uh, but for me, this is how it works. So great, great talking to you, uh, Michael, you know, and it was a lovely discussion that we had today on the happiness so that was Maipal Nair you know talking about happiness at the workplace with us next week we'll have another guest coming in thanks thanks for your time Maipal thank you thank you my pleasure pleasure talking to you